my legs went way up in the air. I grabbed the railing with both of my hands and I went over the railing and I literally said, this is it, I'm going to die because there were like two more floors below me that I was going to drop down to. This is Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God. Those moments when heaven and earth collide and we see God. We see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome. This is episode 127. Why didn't I die? How many people are walking the earth saying that? Where, man, how did I? What happened that I didn't die? God's hand? God's intervention? Ever since episode one, actually, we've talked about this, when um, you're not done yet. Whatever purpose you are to fulfill, you are fulfilling it, and you're, you're still in the bubble, as I say. You're still in this bubble of not done yet. God determines, right? God determines. Back in episode one, it was rather dramatic with Dave and a bullet coming for his head and it bouncing off a windshield. In case you never, no, excuse me, excuse me, side window of his car. In case you haven't heard that episode, episode one, it's still still a dazzler. In this case, it's more that everyday kind of thing that can happen sometimes in a car. Or or say, if you fall asleep in an 18-wheeler, bad things might happen. Car versus deer. A car versus moose? Who survives that? How about the occasion of being in a new school and falling over a railing and looking down at the basement two stories down? All right, let's go to, how about we go to Gene? This is this usually doesn't turn out well. Uh, how many times have you heard horrible things happen when suddenly you know, deer cross, you know, some jumping out onto a highway or whatever and... You know, bad things, not just bad things happen, not just to the car, but to the individual. Jean uh, was in such a situation. You're going through this area with the wooded area on each side because deer have come out of there. I began to pray as I was nearing that area. No deer, God, please. No deer, God, please. (laughs) Then one morning, it was about 630 when I was leaving for work and it was dark outside. And I was driving, and I looked, and there were maybe one or two cars way behind me. I was going, and I think the speed limit was like 45 miles an hour. So I saw a movement out of the corner of my right eye, and there was a deer stepping out of the trees. And the first thought I had was my husband said that where there's one deer, there's usually more nearby. I had no conscious thought of stopping or trying to stop my car. And as God is my witness, one moment my car was going 45 miles an hour. The next minute, my car was standing still, no swerving or anything. My car stopped. I was totally calm. I didn't feel panicky at all. The first deer stepped into the road. The second deer came out, and I think there was a third deer. Um, And as soon as that other deer got to the other side of the road, my car began to move again without any effort on my part. It was like almost like it was suspended animation. I looked in my rearview mirror and the cars that were behind me were still the same length away from me. I was going at a good rate of speed. My car stopped. I didn't stop my car. It just amazed me, and when I got to the rectory, I told the girls there what had happened, and I kept saying, but you don't understand, I didn't stop my car, I didn't even start going. It was like it stopped by itself, and once the deer had crossed, it started again. So you were just suspended in time while the deer crossed the road, and then your car was going and... Going again. Cars behind you are at the same distance. Right. I, I have a feeling just God took care of me and made sure that I was going to be all right. It, and to this day, I just... And when I got, got home, because my mother was living with us, and uh, she told me, she says, you know, you're going to have to share this with a lot of people because... If we share our stories of how God works in our lives, it will help others see how God is working in their life. Thank you, Gene. Appreciate that. Let's let's just ramp it up a little bit more here. Car versus moose. 
this never turns out. Yeah, look how big those huge moose, right? Alaskan moose in this case. We're going to be talking to Don uh, up in Anchorage. I've been, I've been there. Why does one live in Anchorage? Yeah, really. I know. I well, don't know. <laughs> I, see, I see. I, I like Anchorage. I liked Anchorage. Let's see. When were we there? Like July when, you know, I'm looking up into the sky at one o'clock in the morning and the sun's just going around and around at one in the morning. And that's really oh. cool then. That's kind of cool. I remember that. I Yeah. So you visited Anchorage. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And then in the uh, summer. In the, yeah. yeah, that's when you're supposed to be there in the summer, in the winter. <laughs> It's light from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., so I try and get out. Otherwise, it's really, really dark. It's kind of depressing. Yeah. But yeah. We, have, we have the beautiful northern lights at night. That's very true. Well, that is that is beautiful. That is beautiful. I was going to say the moose love it. You know. Oh, yeah. I love, love the moose. Love, we, were, love we were on some highway. I don't know where we were going. Um, Mount McKinley to everybody else, but up there it's Mount... Denali. Denali. Thank Denali. you. Mount Denali. Mm-hmm. I just remember tooling down a road. We were on a, a bus, a tour bus, mm-hmm. and, and there's this moose standing in the middle of the road. So we just stopped yeah. until the moose decided to leave. <laughs> I know. It's funny. Yeah, they, they cross the street in Anchorage, in downtown Anchorage. It's just like, okay, let them go. It's their, it's their environment. We're just visiting. I was um, traveling, you know, speed limit 55, and out of nowhere, this moose rolled up on my um the hood of my car to the windshield i saw the fur the on you know on his back and it was like right by my face but um all of a sudden you know jesus christ the the power the words just came out of me or came came through me pushed the moose off the hood of the car and he just walked away. And I'm like, holy moly, what's, you know, I, I don't remember um, putting the brakes on. I don't remember, all I remember is the hair, the fur of the moose I could see. And it was like an inch or so away from my face. And the word Jesus Christ coming out, that power, I stopped the car and collected myself and went home and called the insurance man the next day. And he's like, this is the least amount of damage I've ever seen by a moose, <laughs> you know. And so well, when you say you when you was, hit it, let's let's go through this. I mean, you you hit the moose, yes. Well, or the moose hit me. It just you know it came out of nowhere. I couldn't even see it. I was just you know do 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 traveling along the road at speed limit. And suddenly and it's on your hood. Yeah, that's yeah. These exactly. things are not light. These things weigh how much? Yes, uh, anywhere from a thousand to fourteen hundred pounds. I sent you a moose picture. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. Um, I think we'll have a mounted. <laughs> sure. um, so it rolls okay. up on your hood and comes that close to your windshield. You and they you, can be like seven feet uh, high yeah, from yeah. the shoulder up. They're huge. These things. Yeah. Um, most of them sell okay. insurance, don't they? The Hartford. <laughs> no, that's the other thing. Never mind. That's not a, that's not a moose. What do I mean? What is it? Um, thousand plus pound animal rolled up on your hood and it's that close to the windshield and you, and you prayed, cried out, whatever, what, uh, for, for G you weren't just swearing. I, you were I actually calling know. out I to Jesus. Well, I didn't know I was. Oh. The fact was I, I wasn't conscious of saying a prayer at the time. It came through me. It was like way too fast and there was no time in it. You know, it's instantaneous. I wasn't conscious of it. It was like it just happened to me, through me. God protected me. So amazing. And it's 35 years later, and I still remember it. Yeah, that you weren't hurt, the car wasn't hurt, nothing. You got nothing. There was a tiny dent on the front of the car. Um, no, I was not hurt, hurt. And then I was looking at, you know, what what happens to other people? And there, it's horrifying. It's horrifying the casualties and the car damage. Oh yeah, you don't you don't win a f- battle with a moose. You don't win. Yeah. But Jesus Christ does. It's like this is amazing. Oh my God, it was so powerful, so power. I thank God. And yeah. now that I think think back on it, I thank God every day for that. I just. Thank you for saving my life. You know, Jesus Christ, it was so powerful. Thanks, Don. I find it interesting, again, how she explained that, that it wasn't, it wasn't like she was hitting the brakes. It wasn't like she was consciously going, I'm praying to Jesus now, that it was just, it was like in an automatic 
prayer coming through her, nothing that she asked for, nothing she went to, but she's connected enough that Jesus acting through her. I thought that I thought that was just interesting. You ever have you ever this has happened to me a few times where you wake up and you're in prayer, like you're praying, and it's like, wait, was it what was I praying for? And I don't, I have no idea what I was praying for. It's like uh, somebody needs a prayer, so you, you, pray, you pray, and somehow the spirit connected, and you find yourself praying. You ever been in that? I don't know, but anyway. And now the story of Mary Ellen and this staircase. She describes it as this Titanic type uh, staircase. You remember the movie where the um, the staircase fr- from above kind of comes from the left and the right, kind of angles down to a main landing and then down to the main floor. Rather grand, isn't it? Well, that is uh, a dangerous place, as it turns out to be, for Mary Ellen and her touched by heaven moment. By far the scariest to me, it was when I was going down the stairs of my new school. It was the very first year that we were in that new junior high school, 12 years old. And the stairs were sort of like the Titanic stairs. They were sort of like this big, massive descending staircase that comes down from two sides and joins into one main you know, side to go to the first floor, but there were two floors below that, two subfloors, a basement and some kind of subfloor. So there was a big well over the side of the railing. And my shoe slipped. I had uh, leather shoes on and the shoe just slipped on the shiny surface because it was like a very glossy, uh, cementy-like compound, but it was very glossy and my leather shoes just slipped. I dropped all of my books and my book bag My legs went way up in the air. I grabbed the railing with both of my hands, and I went over the railing. And I literally said, this is it. I'm going to die because there were like, you know, two more floors below me that I was going to drop down to and land on the true cement basement floor. And uh, I don't know how in the world I got back. I didn't have the effort to push myself backwards. I was never really athletic, not that much. I was more of a studious kid. But um, even if I had been athletic, I doubt that I would have had the stamina to, to push myself over to the right side again, you know. I was going over, and that was it. And suddenly something just pushed me or, or made me go back, and it was like not even – I had can't even describe it. There was no way I could have done that by myself. It was an angel or a guardian or something. So you're going over. You're kind of trying to grab the rail. You're on the. Other- I grabbed it. I had two hands on the rail, but my hands were slipping because it was also a shiny wooden rail. Well, not only that, but the, those rails are at a slant too, right? Everything's at a slant, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. And, and somehow you're on the other side. And you and and yep. you pulled yourself back and flipped yourself back over onto the stairs. I did, and I don't know how I did it because I didn't exert any effort. I just assumed I was going to die. I held on, and I said, "Maybe I I can hang here." But I said, "I don't even think I can hang on. It's too slippery. Everything was slippery. The stairs were slippery. The railing was slippery. You know, the school was pretty new, and we hadn't been in it very long. And I thought, this is it." And then my science teacher was standing at the bottom of the stairs because it was between classes. And he said to me, I thought you were a goner. He saw you do this. He saw you do this. He did. Oh, 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 lots of kids saw it. There were kids changing. There were kids that were changing classes. There were kids in front of me and in back of me and everything. But the teacher saw me and he said... Mr. Sullivan was his name. I'm sure he's dead now because he was about 40 years old then, and this would have been when I was 12, and I'm 70 now. But uh, he did say that. He said, I remember his words. He said, I thought you were a gunner. So what was his scientific explanation? Adrenaline that you pulled yourself back over? He really didn't offer. He, He didn't have any. He was just stunned like I was, and I was shaking and still upset because I didn't know what had just happened to me. I didn't know how I was still functional and back on the right side of the stairs. All you know is somehow the- you went from the well of that staircase up over and you are now on the stairs again. Correct. 
correct. And I was far over. I was not just, you know, even Stephen with the handrail. I was over on the other side. I, I, it just happened that I went back again. And I don't know how. I don't know how to this day. That's why I said I should have been dead. I don't know how that happened to me. Do we assume angel? I do. Okay. I assume my guardian angel. Yeah. The first question everybody has in this case is, who on earth would build a school that has that has a two floor, three floor drop, drop in it? I guarantee right. you, they filled that in somehow. They covered that some. They had to have done something. That's just well, an accident waiting to happen. I know. Well, I went to school there for two years, and then it never changed in those two years. And That's then crazy. I, that is crazy that that possibility even exists in a school. I know. Wow. It's like it was like a Titanic staircase, the basement with all the mechanisms to keep <laughs> the school. Yeah. You know, so but that's I, where I was headed. I think I'm you got it right. I think you got it right. It was Titanic, and it's Leo DiCaprio, and yeah. we're, we're going down, Rose. <laughs> we're going into the suck zone. Here we go. It's, I mean, that's just yeah. nuts. Gee. Except there was no water there, so it would yeah. have been just me splat, splatting have, myself. Yeah, it would have been a no. I, I honestly don't know how I did it. I don't even remember exerting an effort. I just was assuming I'm not going to make this. I'm not going to be able to hold on, and I'm just going to – I was well over onto the other side. Yeah. And, I mean, my feet were up in the air. I'm sure my underwear were all showing because I wore skirts. In those days, we still had to wear skirts. Did not have enough strength in my arms and hands yeah. to get. I was just trying to to keep grasping the slippery handrail that <laughs> slants. Yeah, yeah. I, something happened, didn't it? And it sounded yes, it and it sounded supernatural. Yeah. It. Oh yeah. yeah. It was definitely somebody helped me, and it must have been my guardian angel. Yeah. We still have Mike to hear from, but before we get to Mike, uh, Ivan, um, things didn't look good for Ivan. This was a health situation where he's in ICU. He's got four or five IVs going into him. He's got every tube in the world. It, it, afterwards, doctors and nurses would tell them how stunned they were at what happened. I was a trial lawyer. I practiced law for 37 years. So you're used to the and facts, ma'am. Just give me the facts. By nature and by training. By nature, I was questioning things. It was what we did. We we didn't believe half of what we saw. Uh, when you're a trial lawyer, I always stayed in church. But it's only been in the last few years that I really truly understood what faith was. I guess I had wandered away, and the experiences I've had in the last few years have brought me back and stronger than ever. So it was the experiences themselves that woke you up. Yes, it was it was the experience that really brought me back and uh, grounded me and focused me in my life. Yeah, you're like me then. That's what woke me up too. It's uh, up to, up to then. It was just uh, it was words and ritual and all. The, then suddenly it was oh, this is this is real. <laughs> oh well, it's it's like the blind man when I asked him about it. You know, I was once blind, now I can see. I feel that way because after what I experienced, uh, it just seems like everything has such clarity to it. When yeah. I read the scripture, it just jumps out at me now where before the Old Testament, you know, it just didn't make a lot of sense at times. How did God get your attention then? What did he do a few years back? I ended up in a local hospital in the ICU. I went in, I had a, a gallbladder attack and it was so severe that uh, it put me in ICU and they couldn't do surgery because I had had a heart cath not too, uh, a couple of months before that and I was on some pretty high-powered blood thinners and they couldn't do surgery. And I, they weren't sure if I was going to live or not. If I had a lot of people praying for me. I'm sorry, I get a little emotional <laughs> when I tell this a lot of times, but at one moment, I was in bed, and the next moment, I was standing in the middle of a cobblestone road. It was as clear as me talking to you at this moment. And there was a mist coming up the road, like a cloud coming up the road towards me. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of the movie Ghost. Whoopi Goldberg was in it. And oh, yeah. Patrick Swayze. No, I, I, yeah, I like that and, movie a lot. I like that, yeah. 
as this mist came up the road towards me, and as it got closer, I could see it was not a mist. There were thousands of these light, angelic, translucent apparitions that were streaming that were about a half inch apart. And as it got closer to me, these streaming uh, light, angelic apparitions had digital letters running through it. And the only thing I could think of was Patrick Swayze. When he died, they were coming to him to take him to the light. So my initial thought was, well, Patrick, here, here I come. <laughs> you know, I, I knew I was in the hospital. And I thought, well, had I died, what had happened? So you're seeing this Patrick, light, these streams of light, and they have words in them, kind of in them? Letters. You saw the letters, uh, okay. They were streaming letters all connected together. And then... I'm sorry I get emotional every time. Uh, but before they reached me, there was a voice spoke to me. It was the most loving voice I'd ever heard. It was the most calming warmth to it. And the voice said, fear not for what you're seeing is a multitude of prayers coming to heal you. You heard, fear not, there are a multitude of prayers coming to heal you. And I immediately felt a calmness come over my body. I felt as if it was, there was an anxiety melting away from me. And I just felt like I put my hands down to my side and just stood there in the middle of this cobblestone road as these Aberrations came into my chest. I could feel them entering my body. I could feel, I could feel it running through my veins and arteries, and I could feel my body healing from these prayers. From um... from the prayers coming into my body, these streaming prayers entered my chest and went through my body. And the next thing, the next morning. I started having doctors come into my room and they said, Ivan, we don't know what happened last night. The first one was my cardiologist. He says, Ivan, we don't know what happened last night, but your heart is in rhythm and it's fine. My surgeon comes in and says, Ivan, we don't know what happened last night, but you're stable. You're fine. We needed time before we did that to get you off the blood thinners. Uh, we can, you're stable. You're fine. My, my internal medicine doctor came in and said the same thing. He says, when can we send you home? And within a day or two, I was home. They sent me home. After being as sick as I was, I was just instantly, I was healed. Wow. Do you get a sense and of uh, where those prayers came from? I know where they came from. When they said there's a multitude of prayers coming to heal me, I knew there were hundreds of people praying for me. I was so sick. People in my church, my relatives, my friends, all over the country, I knew people. I knew that I had people praying for me everywhere. And I was seeing in a vivid, descriptive form. I was seeing. And feeling it. I, I not only saw them, I felt them. And I had a voice, which I don't know if it was the Lord or if it was Someone sent by him, but it had to have been uh, an angelic being because they. I was told that they were multiple prayers that were coming to heal. After after going through something like feeling and seeing and all of that, did it change your prayer life? Oh, it definitely. My life has never been the same. But it doesn't stop there. Within one year, I was in the hospital nine times. I was in the ICU six times. I just had all of these strange multiple problems. But you know what? From the moment, that first instant, when I was told to fear not, I truly understood what the being to fear not was. And I never had any doubt. I never had anxiety. I never had any fear. 
I never had anything to prevent me knowing that God was with me every time I was in the hospital. Every now and then on the podcast, somebody has a story where they actually see, feel, hear something about prayer. Because unfortunately, and this is kind of one of my things that I just, I think the church often tells us over and over again that we should be praying, but they don't talk about the results of those prayers. And I think people would pray more and believe more in prayer if we said, remember the time I even had, you know, such and such, and the doctor said such and such. Well, guess what? You know, I just think you and others remind us of the power of prayer. And we've stated in this podcast, prayer moves the hand of God. And we, we forget that. We kind of sometimes get into kind of a ritual of just, okay, I'm going to say some prayers now, but you got to see it and feel it and, and experience that. And I think we all need to be reminded, Ivan, of what you went through, that when we send out prayers, thanks to God, they land. These prayers land. Oh, there is unbelievable power in prayer. That's nice. Okay, thank you very much for calling. All right, God bless you. Thank you. You ever see a prayer? Literally, see a prayer? A couple, couple of other Touch by Heaven episodes just kind of popped into my mind. One of them is uh, when I was talking to Brian about Mandy. Mandy was having some kind of drug reaction going into a seizure, and she said afterwards that she was dying. She felt she was slipping away. All these people gathered about her were watching this happening in this, on the floor of this workplace, and, and Brian was praying. And Mandy's eyes popped open, looked around the room, looked around the room, caught Brian's eyes and reached out to him. And she later told him, I could hear your prayer. And he said, I was praying to myself. I was just praying silently. She said, I heard your prayer and your prayer pulled me back. We don't know, do we? It's real. It's real. And sometimes, and it's true for me too, when, when you're praying, you just, you, you just don't fully comprehend that he is listening. <laughs> you know, you really, it's, they're not, the prayers aren't just bouncing off the walls. They're not. We still have Mike to hear from, but before we get to Mike, uh, come here to episode 127. We have a link called Stay Informed. We'll send you more of these Touched by Heaven stories that are going on around the world. There are uh, articles, videos, things like that in this Touched by Heaven universe. Uh, my Patreon shout out this week goes to, uh, I'll, I'm just, I'm just going to use the Vladimir part. <laughs> This, sorry, Vladimir. Uh, until I know the correct pronunciation, Vladimir. That's all you. And then, then a lot of consonants. Um, thank you so much, Vladimir, for uh, supporting us through Patreon on a monthly basis. And we thank you so much for for your support. And if you're considering supporting us, if these episodes are a blessing to you, if they inspire you, fortify your faith, or maybe help bring you to your faith, uh, we're just so thankful for that. And if you want to. Help us out on a monthly basis financially. Uh, you can do that through Patreon. You can come again here to episode 127, click through on the link, or go to patreon.com, search for Trapper Jack, and go about that way. But thank you so much. And thanks again for keeping us a five-star podcast by your ratings and reviews. We appreciate that. All right, now then, now to Mike on this Touched by Heaven episode. Why didn't I die? This has happened a number of times for Mike, actually. He almost died at birth, uh, rheumatism. Age seven, he gets shot in the back, kind of. Uh, a buddy has a bullet. He puts it on, a, on concrete. He throws a rock at it. The bullet goes off, hits, hits Mike in the back, hits him in the rib. He lives. He's okay. Now, Mike will tell you that he prays, but the powerful prayers for him came from mom and dad. They're past now, but whether it was while they were living or now while they're in heaven, he still knows their prayers praying powerful prayers because he just keeps dodging the bullets, if, if you will. Uh, there, there are a lot of stories. We'll just give you two or three. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what we end up with here. But I mean, even like when, like when he was 16, he's got a Ford Maverick, but he souped it up a little bit and off he go. Get ready. We're going to be tumbling head over heels. Here we go. I did three flips, nose to tail, and landed 120 feet out in the field. It landed so hard, it broke the transmission loose from the engine and twisted the whole car, blew all the windows out of it. And me and my buddy was in it. I grabbed the steering wheel and I grabbed him because we wasn't in seat belts. And we just rolled with the car. We should have been dead. We wasn't hurt at all. What caused the accident? Uh, What'd you do? Took a 30-mile-an-hour corner 
at uh, about 70. And I made it around the corner pretty much, except for there was gravel in the center of it, and I lost traction, and I fishtailed. We almost hit the telephone pole, went down this deep ditch, and it flipped us up in the air, and we just did the roll. We landed on our wheels. Yeah, three flips nose to tail Gee. and landed 120 feet out in the field. The headlights were on, the radio was playing. That was 16. Great. Okay, got your license yeah. and you're putting it to good use. Did parents go angels or just, I'm going to kill that kid? What was what was their reaction then? Well, I was sitting in the back of the state trooper car and my buddy was sitting in the front. And one of my friend's dad had seen a wreck, so he called my dad. So. I told the state trooper, I go, whatever you do, send me to the hospital, take me to jail, but don't let me go with them. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't kill me too bad. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, what's next? And 14 years old, me and my dad was out cutting wood, and he tripped back, and I had a chainsaw go between my leg and my private area and rip my jeans, but didn't touch me at all. That was a miracle, too. You want to explain how you did that one? It just, he stepped back and hit a piece of bark or something, and it ripped right up through my jeans. I don't know. It was, uh, like I said, somebody's watching over me. Yeah, that's a life changer. That could have been a life yeah. changer. Yeah. Yeah. What do you call that, an angel? What do you call that? My mom and dad was very religious, and... Mom always prayed for me. I know mom and dad both and my grandparents. But did you take that as a God connection? Obviously your parents did. Oh, yes, yes. And when I was, um, I think it was 33, I ended up having a double kidney failure. It filled up my lungs and I died on the table three times. 2014, after my parents passed, and in my truck driving career, I've had a couple times where one time where I fell asleep, I heard the rumble strips. And the next thing I know, I look up and I'm right beside the bridge embankment. I mean, I just missed that bridge embankment and I'm driving on the grass. And some way I got it back up on the road without wrecking the, wrecking the semi. Wow. And I believe it was, you know, my parents praying for me and stuff, you know, and watching over me. Because, um, well, my my dad drove the church bus, and my mom played the piano. And uh, your parents are still with you, buddy. They're still with you. Yeah. That's the beauty of uh, yeah. the afterlife. They get to check on us. You know, all the indications yeah. are they get to check on us and pray for us. Oh, They're still praying. Well, I know that. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your stories. Gene, Don, Mary Ellen, for your stories. And Ivan and the power of prayer and watching prayers come at you. God has final say. He does have, and you, and you know what? We don't even we don't know the half of it. We don't know all the times we were nudged a, a different direction, maybe on the road, so we didn't run into what we would have run into. We just, we just, like I say, we don't know the half of it. So, thank your guardian angel when you get a chance. Okay, thanks for listening. Hey, I need your story. I need your encounter story, the one you do know about. Get a hold of me at touchedbyheaven.net. Okay, and uh, I'll see you next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack.